Have you ever completed a game and wondered if there was another game like it? Well, chances are there is. Every game falls under a category called a genre. There are many different game genres, and it is impossible to cover them all in this short video, but I will be covering a few. If there is a specific game genre that you want me to cover, please leave it in the comment section. Outside of a couple of genres, I am going to provide you with some recommendations for games after each genre. Today, most video games fall within one genre, but can still be labeled as one specific genre. Action In my opinion, the largest genre in gaming is the action genre, as it has so many subgenres. The most popular being the platformer, shooter, fighter, sports, and even rhythm. One of my favorites is the Metroidvania genre, which I will specifically cover later in this video. A game is part of the action genre when it focuses on physical challenges. Games that require hand-eye coordination and reaction time. You play as a character, which is typically a protagonist, and you must make your way through multiple levels while collecting objects, avoiding obstacles, and battling through enemies. You'll need to jump over obstacles and enemies, or move out the way at a specific time, or in a specific way. At the end of the level or group of levels, you will end up having to fight and or defeat a boss character. As you progress through these levels, the difficulty of these games tends to increase and become harder to complete. In most cases, this is unnoticeable as you get better at the game with every level. Action games tend to have a finite number or set number of lives. If you repeatedly die on a level or fail to complete a level, the game ends and you must restart from the beginning. This is commonly shown as a game over on your screen. Typically, you will complete multiple levels or groups of levels known as worlds and eventually encounter a major antagonist. This antagonist is the final challenge of the game and once you bested, you've completed the game. However, most older action games have an infinite amount of levels. These games focus on achieving high scores for amazing and long-lasting gameplay. As I've mentioned earlier, there are many other genres that fall under the action genre. You may have even thought of a specific game during my explanation. There are so many action games that I'm going to recommend popular series such as Bomberman, Mega Man, Frogger, and Ninja Turtles. There are plenty of other series with lots of action, but these were the only popular series that I could think of that have little to no story. Otherwise, they would fall into other categories that I'm going to talk about later. Adventure Another prominent genre with many subgenres. Adventure games are based around a story where your protagonist is making their way through a lengthy adventure. While most adventure games today have action in it, some adventure games didn't even have any images, just text requiring the player to do a lot of reading. When I was a kid, I loved reading those choose your own adventure books. At some point in the story, you make a choice and the story continues based on the choice that you made. Adventure games require you to explore and or problem solve in order to progress through the story. Think of it as a movie where you follow the main character, but instead, you're the main character progressing through a fictional world. Many games are actually based off of movies. Though many games have adventure in them, they are considered to be another genre. For example, role-playing games or RPGs can be considered an adventure game. You assume the role of a character and progress through a world. However, RPGs require lots of math and stats since your character gets stronger as they progress through the story. I'll cover RPGs later. Adventure games also have puzzles within the game that the player must figure out in order to progress through the game. There aren't many games that are solely part of the adventure genre today. Many adventure games are text-based games, graphic novels, where you make a choice by choosing a graphic or a point and click due to the growing use of the computer mouse, and interactive movie where you watch a scene and make a choice based on how you think the story should progress. Recent games that fall into the adventure genre are the telltale games like The Walking Dead, The Wolf Among Us, Tales of Monkey Island, and a few Batman games that focus on narrative rather than action. Action Adventure Now that I have explained both individually, many of the games that I have enjoyed most are from the action adventure genre. As you may think, the action adventure genre has elements of both the action genre and the adventure genre. Just like the action genre, 
It requires precise hand-eye coordination and excellent motor skills, and it has a story that you can experience firsthand through problem solving. Action adventure games have plenty of elements from individual subgenres. On this channel, there is a lot of Call of Duty COD clips. The COD story mode would be considered an action adventure game. However, I play multiplayer, which falls into the action genre, or more specific subgenre, shooter. There is no story in most, if not all, of the multiplayer game modes. In most action adventure games, your character does get stronger, but in a different way than an RPG. As you progress through the story, you'll find items that make your character strong. These items will increase your hit points, which is how much damage your character can take before you game over, your strength, which is how much damage your character can deal, your defense, how much damage your enemies can do to you, and your speed, how fast you can move. There are plenty of items that can change how your character performs in the game. Similar to the adventure genre, the action adventure genre feels like a movie. If the story of the game is good enough, it often motivates the player to continue playing, especially since the player is driving the narrative with action and well-timed button presses and door combinations. Popular games that fall within the action adventure genre are series such as The Legend of Zelda, God of War, Tomb Raider, Resident Evil, Assassin's Creed, and many, many others. Platformer the platformer genre is part of the action subgenre, which means it has all the elements of the action genre. The main objective of a platformer is to make it to the end of the level through well-timed jumps and or climbing between platforms that are suspended in mid-air or far away from the platform that you're currently on. Most platformers are 2D games. You start at the left and your character progresses to the right until you make it to the end of the level. During this time, you must jump between platforms and dodge obstacles. In most cases, the screen pans or scrolls with the character. Failure to do so will cause you to fall into a pit and or get hit by an obstacle which will result in the loss of a life. When your character loses a life or dies, it restarts from the beginning of the level or the last checkpoint that you came across while traversing the level. Most platforms are games where your character can only move left or right and jump. Other platformers have more advanced techniques where you jump off of walls, glide through the air, or even double jump, where you can jump while already in midair. Some even allow you to attack. There are also 3D platformers which remove the limitations of only going left or right. 3D platformers allow the player to view the character from a third person perspective, typically from viewing the back of the character. The character can now move in all directions, left, right, backwards, where it seems as if the character is moving towards you, and forwards, where it seems as if the character is moving away from you, all while the character is still on the ground. The character can move along the X, Y, and Z axis, similar to how we move in the real world. Similar to 2D platformers, the character must still reach a certain point in order to complete the level. Though the genre may seem simple, platformers can be challenging because they require excellent motor skills. Popular series from the platforming genre are Super Mario, Sonic the Hedgehog, Donkey Kong, Crash Bandicoot, Banjo and Kazooie, and many more. Mario Maker has challenging platforming levels that really test your hand-eye coordination. Celeste and Super Meat Boy are also challenging platformers. Role-playing games. Now we're getting down to two of my favorite genres, one of which is the role-playing game genre, or RPG. This genre is based off tabletop board games such as Dungeons & Dragons, which use dice roll mechanics. Simply put, when characters attack one another in the game, it rarely does the exact same amount of damage with each attack, just like when you roll a die, you'll rarely get the same result. An RPG is similar to an adventure game in that it also focuses on story. The difference is that your character gets stronger as you progress through the game utilizing experience points. Experience points represent the progress through the game. In most RPG, once you receive enough experience points, you'll level up. Leveling up increases your character's stats, hit points, attack, defense, speed, etc. Unlike the action adventure genre, this is done without the use of items, though it has been adapted into some games in the action adventure genre. However, items can still be used to supplement your character's stats. I like to think of RPGs as being similar to real life. You start off weak and inexperienced. As you progress through life, you'll get stronger and wiser and are able to achieve goals that you couldn't before. 
As you level up in an RPG, your character may gain new abilities that allow you to deal with tougher enemies. These abilities typically come at the cost of magic points or MP. Just like with hit points, you'll have a finite number of magic points which may increase as your character levels up. Depending on the game, magic points can be referred to as something else. Combat in RPG is turn-based. Your character and the enemy take turns attacking one another until either side runs out of hit points. Your character running out of hit points means you lose the battle and will result in the game over and you'll have to restart from the last checkpoint or save point. Winning these battles often requires strategy and planning. It is important that you fight a lot of enemies in order to gain a lot of experience points so that your character can get stronger and be able to fight even stronger enemies. In some cases, your character is fighting against multiple enemies, but you may also have a team of your own. As I have mentioned, RPGs focus on story. Your character needs to get stronger in order to beat the major antagonist. Some of my favorite RPGs have you fight the major antagonist in the beginning of the game just to have you lose. This doesn't result in the game over, but this does show the player the ultimate goal. It's all the more rewarding when you finally defeat them at the end of the game and showcases how much experience you've earned while experiencing the story. There are many different types of RPG and the genre can change by simply adding an adjective in front of it. For example, there are action RPG, tactical RPG or strategy RPG, and Japanese RPG, which has been my main focus of this explanation. For my gaming recommendations, I'm going to stick with traditional RPG or JRPG with series such as Final Fantasy, Dragon Quest, Pokemon, Fantasy Star, and Grandia. Some of my personal favorites were Super Mario RPG, the Mario and Luigi series, Chrono Trigger, Xenosaga, and Shadow Hearts. Metroidvania The last genre I'm going to focus on in this video is the Metroidvania genre. I've mentioned this genre in some of my previous videos. It is a subgenre of the action adventure genre. Once again, this genre has elements of both the action genre and the adventure genres. Most Metroidvania games I've played often have elements from the platforming genre. Metroidvania came from mixing the games Metroid and Castlevania. Both series focus on exploration. Unlike the other genres, there is a world which requires a player to repeatedly retrace their steps. For example, you'll reach the end of a world and or area. Once you've explored another area, you'll obtain an item or tool that will allow you to progress even further into the world that you thought you've already completed. While this requires a lot of backtracking, the player is often rewarded for exploring the game world. While I've never gotten into the Castlevania series, I have played multiple Metroid titles, Metroid Prime being my entry into the series. This game was a 3D Metroidvania style game. At the time, I didn't even know what a Metroidvania style game was. I loved retracing my steps and finding secrets that I couldn't obtain before. I was fascinated when I found out that multiple areas in the game were connected. For example, you'll experience the game and you'll get to area one, then to area two, and finally area three. Now you have to go back to Area 1, but you'll find a secret exit that connects Area 1 directly to Area 3. I feel the same way when I learn new areas in my city. Oh, was this place always so close to this place that I've been to a million times? The Metroidvania genre focuses heavily on exploration. However, you don't have to explore every area. Metroidvania style games can be very exhausting with the constant backtracking. In some games, you don't even need to retrace your steps. You can complete the game without having to explore every area. I, for one, feel defeated when I complete a game and the game tells me I didn't find every secret. It makes me want to go back and find the secrets that I've missed. Often, finding these secrets makes your character that much stronger, thus making the game that much easier. Popular games that fall within the Metroidvania genre are the Metroid series, the Castlevania series, Guacamelee, Hollow Knight, Lone Fungus, a game I've recently completed, Superland, Axiom Verge, and Blasphemous. Of course, there are many more. Thank you for watching this video. I've enjoyed sharing my knowledge on the different game genres. There are many other game genres I've yet to talk about and will get to in future videos. If there are any specific genres that you are curious about, please drop them in the comment section. If you've enjoyed my explanation or learned something new, please like the video and subscribe for more. I plan on doing more videos like this and showcasing other genres. With that being said, deuces.